What we're going to be looking at here are available for sale versus trading securities and we're going to look at the basic difference when it comes to reporting any unrealized gains or losses on these securities and the difference is going to be reporting them as equity versus reporting them as net income here for any of those gains or losses on these securities here. So uh, what we have to do here at each reporting date here we look at trading versus available for sale securities here. Uh, first for available for sale securities here you report them at their fair value you record any unrealized gains or losses related to the changes here in the fair value in an unrealized holding gain or loss as an equity account here in the shareholders equity part of the balance sheet here so that's for our, our available for sales securities here now for reporting trading securities again you report them at the fair value within unrealized holding gains or losses reported as part of net income here so trading securities it goes directly to net income here any unrealized holding gains or losses okay so let's go look at our example here so what a company has here and we'll look at at Corporation A, their securities here. That when we talk about the securities, those are securities that they're holding as investments here. And what they have to do at the end of each reporting period, in this case, let's just look at it as a year-end reporting here, 1231X1. So what they have to do is, of course, we list our securities here, and then we have to determine the cost of the securities that we're holding at that reporting period. And what, what I mean by cost is here, uh, some of these securities may have been bought during the year here some of them uh, were sold off and whatever but you have to determine what securities you have and you have to determine their cost then the next thing you have to do is you have to determine the fair value as of the end of the year here so the cost is what the cost what you're what's sitting on the books here the fair value that's what you have to determine as of the end of the year and that's what they're actually worth here what you could uh, sell these securities at and then the uh, difference between our costs and our fair value is going to go into either an unrealized gain or loss here. Okay, so let's look at our example here. We only have two securities. We have some common stock here and we have some preferred stock. And I got the number of shares listed here, but the important here importance is the cost here. So for our common stock, we have a cost here of 80000 And then our fair value as of the end of the year here is 92000 So you can see here, our fair value is greater than our cost. So this is where we're going to have an unrealized gain in this case of 12,000. Now looking at our preferred stock here, cost 52,000, fair value at the end of the year 44,000. So you can see here our fair value is less than our cost, so in this case we're going to have a loss here of $8,000 on that security. So what we would do here to determine our unrealized gains and losses we look at it as, as a gross amount or a net amount so whatever securities we have here the gains and the uh, gains have to be netted against the losses in this case we had a twelve thousand dollar gain here on our common stock eight thousand loss on our preferred stock so the net amount here is four thousand dollars so that's what we have to real uh, work with when we're recording this security here for any unrealized gains or losses in this case it's a gain of four thousand and you can see that same deal here you just add up your total cost here for our securities was 132,000 total fair value 136,000 so again our fair value exceeded our cost here by four thousand dollars okay so now we've we've you have to make make that determination here we have we've got an unrealized gain here of four thousand dollars to deal with here so let's go down and let's first look at our trading securities here so what you have to do in each of these cases you have to uh, set up your investment account here uh, in this case you have to title it here trading securities I got it for trading here and what you do here you're gonna debit that here at its cost that hundred hundred and thirty two thousand dollars so a total gross amount here for our securities here hundred thirty two thousand debit that here uh, on trading costs uh, trading securities go at the cost now what we have to do is we have to set up a fair value adjustment account here for these securities for our trading securities here and what that is is a valuation account here rather than going in um, Taking, making our adjustments here directly to the trading secure trading securities account here we set up the fair value adjustment account so we would debit that here 
for four thousand dollars. That was the unreal. Uh, that was our unrealized gain and loss here. That was the adjustment. That's our fair value adjustment here for four thousand dollars. Again, at the end of the year here. So what we've done here by using this valuation account, if you just add a, everything you add up here to cost the hundred thirty-two thousand plus the fair value adjustment here of four thousand here, hundred thirty-two thousand four thousand gives us the fair value here of 136,000. So that's what we're reporting in here, the fair value of 136,000. Now, let's go over here. Now that we've got that set up here, what we have to do with this uh, adjustment or this unrealized gain or loss that we were looking at, we have to set up an account here, what we call an unrealized holding gain or loss. And in this case, for the trading ex securities here, it's part of income on our income statement. So what we've done here, our fair value adjustment here, debit that here for what we had for 4,000 debit amount here in our adjustment account here, we would go over and we'd credit that in our unrealized holding gain or loss here, $4,000. Uh, credit that here for the balancing amount. Debit here, 4,000. Credit here for 4,000. Again, this is part of, on the income statement, it's part of income here. And it would be reported here as other revenues and gains on your, and your income here. And is part of net income here reported as other revenues and games. And this goes to the income statement. So you can see with the trading securities here, we uh, set up the fair value adjustment account here. But what we, what we were adjusting this uh, unrealized gain or loss here went to uh, directly to the income statement here on our, inc on our income statement here. Okay, so now let's go down and let's look at the available for sale securities. Again, you set up your um, uh, account here, whatever whatever security, we're going to look at it as the case here where these uh, securities here are available for sale securities. We looked at them as uh, trading securities. Now let's just look at the case here for available for sale securities here. Again, set it up, uh, your account here on your balance sheet, and you would debit that here at, their co at the cost. In this case, we're using the same example here, one hundred thirty-two thousand dollars of cost. Again, set up your fair value adjustment account here and label it available for sale here, and you would debit that here for that adjustment that we had made of four thousand dollars. Again, uh, that's a valuation account. So, looking at our total cost here, uh, thirty-two hundred thirty-two thousand plus the fair value adjustment here of four thousand. Again, we have the. Uh, fair value we're reporting here at 136000 as we should be. Okay, so this is the deal here with the available for sale. Now, that unrealized holding gain or loss here, that is that $4,000 uh, amount here. So we had the debit here and a fair value adjustment of 4000 Now the credit goes to, again, unrealized holding gain or loss here credit that here for 4000 But the difference is here, when we're dealing with the available for sale security, we it's part of the equity here on the balance sheet. Now remember with the, and let's go look at it up back here, for the trading ex, ex securities here, this unrealized holding gain or loss here was part of income here on our income statement. Now with the available for sale, it's part of equity here on the balance sheet here. So it would be reported here as share uh, and shareholders equity here as other comprehensive income. Again, equity here. Okay, so with this available for sale security here, uh, it would go into the income statement here only on the sale of the available for sale securities. That's where you'd realize any gain or loss here only after the sale or uh, getting uh, selling those securities here. So in that case here, um, the unrealized holding gain or loss would be, uh, we would be crediting our gain or loss here on our income statement here for, in this case, $4,000. So that's the distinction here when we're talking about the available for sale securities. Every, um, in, it has to be uh, included here that unrealized holding gain or loss goes into equity here on our balance sheet here and only after they're sold here would it go into a gain or loss on the in your income statement. Okay so well, let's just go back and look at it one more time here so with our looking at our trading both for our trading securities here 
and are available for sale securities you have to set up your securities account here and in both cases you have to set up that fair value adjustment account here that's that valuation account here uh, you don't make any adjustments directly to the securities accounts for those the fair value adjustment each period you set up the separate valuation account and that's where you make your adjustment and then when you do make that adjustment then it has to go into an unrealized holding gain or loss account here and for the trading securities it went on directly into the income statement here reported as other revenues and gains here on your income statement and then for the available for sale the unrealized holding gain or loss was part of equity here at, in the as shareholders equity and is reported as other comprehensive income here in the equity okay so this is the basic that's the basic difference here when it comes to um, looking at available for sale versus trading securities